Okay, so I'm uh, David Hess. I'm the Dean of the Medical College of Georgia. I've been Dean for about three and a half years. Um, before that, I was Chairman of the Department of Neurology for about 16 and a half years. Um, actually, since yeah, about 2000. Um, and before that, I was in the Department of Neurology. I did my residency here, and I, and I did a stroke fellowship before there were approved stroke fellowships. That was so long ago, we didn't have approved stroke fellowships. So to summarize, you know, the research here that I do, and there's much more going on in the department that I do, is mostly around stroke, acute stroke, which is, you know, the number one cause of disability in adults in the United States. Um, vascular dementia, Dr. Morgan does more of the Alzheimer's dementia, but vascular dementia is the second most common cause. And then lastly, you know, neurological complications of COVID-19, and we don't know where that's going to go. But hopefully we'll, we'll be doing a, we'll have a cohort study here. We want to follow these people for as long as we can get funded. We have the first year of funding, and I'm confident we'll get more funding. Um, and we'll follow these patients long term, which will hopefully be here. This will be the, the COVID Framingham, the neurological COVID Framingham. And we'll actually be able to follow and know what happens to these people by, by you know, yearly follow up, you know, cognitive testing, taste testing, smell testing, and hopefully with funding, MRI testing. So we'd always love to have uh, students and residents in the lab. We have most of the people I work with you know, are full time. They're, they're postdocs, but we'd love to have residents and students and fellows. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jeff Switzer. I became the fourth chair of the Department of Neurology at the Medical College of Georgia in January 2019. I'm proud to be the fourth chair in the department's 50 year history, succeeding my mentor, David Hess, the current Dean of the Medical College of Georgia and Tom Swift, former president of the American Academy of Neurology, both of whom still work within the department. As chair of the department, my immediate focus is to target trends that I think we're all seeing within neurology. Number one is a growing burden of neurologic diseases and a shrinking number of neurologists and neurologic subspecialists to take care of these diseases. We're seeing this in our region as well as throughout the country. In response to that, we're taking steps to enlarge the department both on a trainee and faculty level. Since I became chair, we've recruited eight neurologists who have either started or will start soon within the department, including two stroke specialists, a neurointensivist, two pediatric neurologists, an epileptologist, a neuromuscular specialist, as well as a general neurologist. We've increased the size of our residency program from four to six adult residents per year. And our intent is to expand the child neurology residency from one resident every other year to one resident per year over the next couple of years. We've added a neurointerventional fellowship and we plan to expand other fellowships in the coming years, including neurocritical care and epilepsy. In addition, we're trying to grow our support staff, including nurse practitioners and PAs. We've added seven within the department, and there's probably room for us to target even more to allow physicians and residents and trainees to focus on what's most important. Hi, I'm Dr. Manan Shah. I'm one of the neurocritical care faculty at Medical College of Georgia. I did my neurology residency at University of Texas, San Antonio, before completing my neurocritical care fellowship at University of Texas, Houston. So, neuroresidents rotate very early during their training, which lays a very good foundation for their clinical skills, and they get comfortable managing such conditions. They also get a often experience of performing brain resuscitative measures to treat a severe brain edema that can accompany some of these devastating neurological injuries. Residents also get acquainted to the surgical aspect of neurological conditions such as EBD management and intracerebral hemorrhages, surgical evaluation of ischemic stroke and intracerebral hemorrhages. We perform all our procedures at bedside ranging from lumbar puncture to emergent intubation, central line placement, bronchoscopy, 
and interested residents are welcome to learn their skills at bedside. Medical education is an important mission of the ICU team. In addition to neurology residents, we have medical students, nurse practitioner students, and PA students rotating through ICU. We also have a dedicated one-year Neuro ICU NP Fellowship program. We have daily small roundtable didactic sessions where residents are encouraged to present and they learn by teaching students and APPs. Residents also get several opportunities to work on research and quality improvement projects with ICU faculty and ICU pharmacists. Over the years, Neuro ICU at MCG have shown a tremendous growth and we are happy to play our part in residency education. I encourage you all to explore MCG for your neurology residency and I assure you will have a great clinical and educational experience. Welcome, I'm Dan Victor Chujutsu, Dr. G. You'll notice here we have a neurotraditional program that is joint between neurology and neurosurgery, which will give you some unique opportunities should you pursue a residency or fellowship here. Unlike other centers that may be radiology or neurosurgery based, you'll have a chance to rotate in your intervention, to try your hands-on procedures, at least gain access and then get more advanced as your interests and time takes you. You'll have a chance to review catheter-based imaging in day-to-day -day rounds with myself or Dr. Nichols and to gain an understanding of how it correlates to neuroanatomy and neurologic function. You'll see how we can incorporate neurointervention into your daily practice as a vascular neurologist, as a pathologist, or as a general neurologist taking care of a large number of patients and having knowledge of where to send patients for what kind of interventions. So I'm glad you're looking at us and we look forward to seeing the future. I'm the uh, Young Park uh, Director of the Pediatric Epilepsy Program as well as the Director of the AU Epilepsy Monitoring Unit. I have been jo joined to our program since 1991 when I finished the uh, two years program of uh, Epilepsy uh, Fellowship at the Duke. Before then, I was uh, trained for child neurology in the Montefiore Einstein program at the Bronx, New York. Uh, since we joined, and the, our program has been the, uh, very actively involved the epilepsy surgery. Our program is uh, one of our oldest epilepsy surgery program in the Southeast Regional since the 1980s. We do have a whole variety of uh, epilepsy drug trial, ketogenic diet, epilepsy surgery uh, using the stereotactic e electroencephalogram and as well as the RNS system, Responsible Neurostimulation program as well. Uh, we do have uh, every week epilepsy surgery conference, uh, including the uh, neurosurgeon. And the, uh, so once you join, you can learn a lot of challenging cases, how we can approach of, uh, tough cases. In addition to the epilepsy, we do have a Georgia uh, Sleep Center next to our program, you can expose yourself to the, our sleep center uh, in the variety of uh, sleeping uh, disease. Uh, welcome to the join to the, our program. Hopefully you will learn many other things, particularly the epilepsy program as well as the child neurology. Thank you for your consideration. I'm Dr. Michael Rivner and I'm on the faculty here at Augusta University. I've been here for a long time, over 40 years. I am current, I'm interested in neuromuscular disease. So I did my training, my undergraduate work at Duke University. Then I went to medical school at Emory Me Medical School and I did my internship, residency, and fellowship training here at Augusta University. And I've been here ever since. We have a very active EMG laboratory and we have capabilities to do full EMG exams. We do single fiber examinations. We do diaphragmatic examinations. 
We also have an ultrasound machine and do ultrasound examinations as part of the training. And during your rotation, you would learn how to do some of this. In addition to the neuromuscular program in botulinum toxin, I also teach neuroanatomy. And as a resident, you will have to listen to me once a week teach you about neuroanatomy. And I do morning report at that time as well. And so you'll have considerable interaction with me in terms that I that you'll see me at least once a week throughout your entire residency program. And when you rotate on neuromuscular EMG, you'll have an opportunity to interact with me as well. I look forward to working with you. Hi, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Rakowski. I am a neurologist. Um, I recently started here at Augusta University as an associate professor and moved out here actually from San Francisco back in January. Um, I finished medical school at the University of South Florida in Tampa and then I completed neurology residency at UCSF in San Francisco where I took a job for four to five years before moving to Augusta um, where my husband took a job. So um, I have a variety of different roles here at Augusta University. Um, the first of which is I'm a neurohospitalist, so you'll see me as an attending on the third year rotation um, where you'll join me on the general neurology ward service where we see a variety of non-stroke patients on our primary service as well as um, seeing a lot of the consults in the hospital. Um, I also have a dual role as a medical educator, so I'm working with the Medical College of Georgia and with the first and second year medical school curriculum to try to shorten that. And it's called the three plus curriculum where we're trying to get a four year med school curriculum into three years. Um, so they need a lot of help with revamping that and shortening that. Um, we have lots of third year medical students and fourth year sub eyes that will rotate with us. Um, so if you like medical education, there will be lots of opportunities for you to teach here. Um, and then the last thing that I do is a little bit of research. Right now we are involved in a COVID-19 research study that is looking at the neurologic complications of the virus. And we hope to track patients here throughout Georgia for at least five years to see if patients that complain of smell or taste loss or cognitive problems change with time. Um, you will sometimes see me attending in the urgent consult clinic where um, patients that are recently seen in an emergency room or have urgent conditions like pseudotumor cerebri or lots of seizures, um, they can sometimes be booked very urgently in our clinic that hopes to get them in within a few days or up to a week um, to hopefully avoid more ER visits and to get them out of the hospital sooner. Hi, I'm Colin McLeod. I'm an assistant professor in the Movement Disorders Division. Um, I'm supposed to tell you a little bit about myself. I got interested in movement disorders at a very young age, even before medical school, where I did at University of Florida. I was rotating in those clinics. I went to Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, which also happens to have excellent movement disorders division, and then did two years of fellowship at the Medical University of South Carolina uh, with a deep brain stimulation focus. And then I moved here to uh, take the assistant uh, professor job here. MCG is, is pretty unique. It's actually steeped in movement disorders tradition with Kapil Sethi, who is a big name on the international stage at the Movement Disorders uh, Society meetings. Here also, we have Dr. John Morgan, who's our division head. We are a long-standing Parkinson's Disease Center of Excellence, which is only about 30 institutions in the country. So our referral base is quite enriched in that sense. So the patients that you see are very good for subspecialty training and, uh, and those kind of things. We have three movement specialists right now. So the idea is that you get really good exposure and efficient teaching by people who see a whole lot of that kind of specialization. Dr. Keurig and I, Dr. Keurig being one of the other movement uh, professors, have Botox clinics uh, where we do botulinum toxin injections for all manners of conditions from blepharospasm and hemifacial spasm and oral mandibular dystonias to cervical dystonias and uh, appendicular dystonias and we also will do spasticity and some other conditions as well and then we also have a deep brain stimulation program here I personally go into the operating room and run the electrophysiology equipment drive the probes and there's opportunity for hands-on exposure and experience there too which is really a, a, a burgeoning field in our 
profession. I will say just a, a moment about our division head, Dr. John Morgan. He also heads up our memory division, which has a big program in the Georgia Memory Net, which is a, a dense collaboration with Emory across the state. We're the biggest institution outside of that state, uh, outside of Emory, that looks at Alzheimer's clinics and efficiency and clinical trials. So he actually has a pretty large memory clinic, an Alzheimer's clinic, where you could get some pretty dense exposure with a specialist as well. Hello, my name is Dr. Edward Hartman. I'm the Chief of Neurology at the VA Medical Center in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, we work closely with the Neurology Department at Augusta University. My background is having uh, specialty training within neuromuscular diseases and epilepsy with a special interest in neuromuscular diseases and EMG. Um, I'm one of three neurologists here, uh, with the other two being a general neurologist and having an EEG epilepsy specialty. We complement the AU Medical Center experience in neurology quite well, mainly because the veterans provide a different clientele and a different patient population with a very diverse uh, set of conditions. We also provide a good mimic for what a resident should expect once they graduate, should they choose to go out in general practice, that all see all neurologic patients and provides a good diversity of patient care, both in the inpatient setting and outpatient setting, as well as performing various procedural and interventional uh, neurology testing. So overall, we have a very good working experience with them and provide a good rounding of the educational experience to the neurology residency program. My name is Dr. Suzanne Smith. I'm the director of the Multiple Sclerosis Clinic at Augusta University. Our center is recognized by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society as a comprehensive care center. In addition to managing patients living with multiple sclerosis, we treat other disorders to include neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, transverse myelitis, optic neuritis, and anti-MOG associated disease. Our patient population includes adolescents and adults who come to us from a wide geographic area over Georgia and South Carolina. Being a major referral center, we see a wide range of clinical presentation of disease to include very complex cases. We provide infusion therapy services at our clinic, and we manage intrathecal baclofen pumps for severe spasticity. Our center is very active in the education of medical students, residents, advanced practice providers, and physical therapy students. We're involved in clinical research, and we welcome resident input for new research projects. Our team is passionate about providing exceptional care for our patients to include disease-specific education for patients, their families, and caregivers. Thank you for your interest in our department and the program. Please contact me or any faculty member if you have questions or would like additional information. We look forward to hearing from you.